Have you been dreaming up an upholstery project, but you're just getting started and you aren't quite sure where to start? Then you're in the right place. I am going to share a budget-friendly way to get started, how to save way more money than I did, some barriers you may face and how to overcome them, and make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end because I am going to show you how I leveled up my skills starting as a beginner with zero experience to building this as my first project. I am proof that an entire sofa can be upholstered with a $19 staple gun. I will tell you the only downside to this tool is the constant need to charge it if you were doing a massive project. Other tools I would invest in would be your staple remover, upholstery scissors, and this handy mason jar I'm going to show you how to make real quick. I found this tutorial from Sailrite where you basically hammer a screw into a mason jar top and it makes the best carving tool. You screw it back onto that mason jar handle and you have the perfect way to soften your edges. Next, if your project requires sewing, I would invest in a seam ripper, straight pins, as well as fabric chalk. Now the next few items I recommend borrowing if at all possible. The most obvious reason is for cost. You don't want to have a whole bunch of money you're investing up front before you even know if you like it or if you feel like you can develop those skills over time. The other reason is the hope is that that person can give you some guidance, some tips, how to safely and properly use those tools. Now these few things you'll need if you are planning to construct the base of your sofa or piece of furniture yourself. That would be your drill, the miter saw, the table saw. For the table saw, we actually rented ours. Don't recommend that if you've never used one because not only is there the difficulty of getting it in the truck, getting it out of the truck, but if you don't know how to use that, it can be highly, highly dangerous, which we found out the hard way. My finesse for this portion of your project would be to have the hardware store cut as many of the cuts as they are willing to do for you. Before going in, I would know exactly what all of my measurements were, triple check them, and then I would mark them out for the person that's going to be cutting it for you in the store to make it easier and faster and for it to be less likely that their manager makes them stop helping you. <laughs> now with this strategy of just selecting the essentials for your toolkit on your upholstery journey, you're only looking at a minimum of $45.12 and that can go upwards about $60 if you're also investing in the sewing tool. Now when it comes to materials, I will be fully transparent. I did not apply these money-saving hacks to my own project and the more I researched, the more I questioned all my life choices. And yet, I feel like a big purpose of my channel is to help other people be much, much, much better and smarter than I was. So the main bulk of the budget went to both fabric and foam. Now on the foam side of things, the best option I found was through Amazon. They had a range of options for widths and sizes of the foam. You could return it and like I said, it would come as soon as the next day. Now my Amazon option cost me a whopping $554. However, I have a hack for you, thrift your foam. You could find a thrifted couch for as little as $8, usually around $20 or $30. And if the cushions seem nice and plump and they don't kind of feel dilapidated and all droopy or whatever, that could be a really solid option for your project. You may still need to supplement with some of that Amazon foam. If you can get the bulk of your foam, especially the thicker pieces from a thrifted item and reuse that, it's gonna save you so much money. For fabric, I actually intended to splurge a little bit on my fabric. I wanted a high performance, high quality, luxurious fabric for my sofa. I got my fabric from the Fabric Outlet and I highly recommend them because their customer service was out of this world. As a beginner, I had no idea how to even quantify how much fabric I was gonna need. The sweet ladies at the Fabric Outlet allowed me to email them my sketches, y'all, with my measurement, with my reference photo of the commonly owned that, and she told me how much fabric I would need. I ended up having to still buy four extra yards because I was giving myself this much buffer on all sides when I first started. So I kind of wasted quite a bit early on because I was, again, so nervous about messing up. But their customer service was top tier. The quality was amazing. And I'll talk a little bit more about that quality later on. Now I have some other options to help save you money. 
and that would again be going to the thrift store and looking at their textiles section and seeing if there's anything that could work that would go with the aesthetic of what you're trying to create. There are plenty of other sites out there to help you save money on fabric. Fabric Wholesale Direct is one that I've seen a lot of love for online. I actually looked for a fabric that was comparable to the one that I chose for my project and it was significantly less. You can see the side by side right here. Now one thing I want you to pay attention to when you're thinking about your own project is the durability of that fabric. The double rub will tell you how durable your fabric is and you want to look at that number. If that number is a little bit lower, you're not going to want to use that for any area that you have that's a high use, high traffic area because you're going to spend all this time creating your beautiful piece and then it's going to deteriorate even faster <laughs> than you spent the time building it yourself. My fabric that I chose actually had a hundred thousand double rub and the comparison in this site only had ten thousand. So that can account for why the price is a little bit higher. You just have to determine for yourself how much you want your fabric to be durable. Now every project is unique, but I just wanna give you an idea of how much my full scale project cost and how much it could have cost if I was a little bit thriftier and had used some of my own advice. My project ended up costing $1,787.94. If I used the budget-friendly fabric, it would have cost $1,356.21. This is my full budget breakdown. I've linked everything I use below. Now, if I had purchased the iconic Comaleonda sofa, it would have cost a whopping $20,000 after shipping and handling. Mixed note to my husband that I saved us over $18,000. Making things is hard, y'all. There are so many things coming at us as creatives every single day that can make you just feel like giving up in general. And I just want to encourage you on that journey to really feel proud of yourself for going for it, for even wanting to learn how to do something new because it's not easy and the reward on the other side of that work that you're doing is going to be magical. Here are a few tips to help you get through those days that just feel like some of these obstacles can be tactical, like running out of materials. Something I've learned on my journey is to buy an excess of your staples, excess of screws, especially because you can get those from Home Depot and they have a 90 day return policy. Efficiency is gonna keep your momentum going. There are some things mentally that can block you from that success that you are hoping to have. I honestly feel that my greatest failures were procrastinating and being fearful of moving forward. I wasted months on months waiting and being unsure of myself and being afraid to fail. My sofa project took me a total of 36 days and that was spread out over the course of 10 months. Three of those months were spent in fear of moving forward with the framing. I've never done that before. Many more of those months was afraid of working on the fabric because I had spent so much money on that. I'd highly recommend lowering that cost to entry because it's a valid fear. You've never done something like this before and you don't want to screw it up. You can ease that anxiety by testing out your skills on scrap material, on something that, like an old t-shirt. You can practice your seam lines on some scrap wood. You can practice your pocket hole. At the end of the day, you're going to make mistakes throughout that project and it's going to be okay. I truly feel like that was the greatest lesson I learned creating this project. As difficult as it is as a perfectionist to embrace failure, the more you fail and the more you get comfortable with that being a part of your process, the greater your resilience is going to be and that's how you're going to accomplish anything you dream up whether it's upholstery or anything in life now that i'm done with my sermon <laughs> the other tactical thing that can slow you down and be a barrier to your success is underestimating how long things can take i was saying i was gonna finish something in a day just don't do it to yourself. When you're a beginner doing anything, you really have no idea how long something is gonna take. You don't consider the fact that you need to eat during the day. You don't consider the cleanup. You don't consider hiccups, like how difficult it is to reload a bobbin. Like, why is it so difficult? 
Give yourself the grace you need in that project. You celebrate the milestones. Every day you work on it and you accomplish something, hype yourself up, you deserve it. It is not easy to make something from scratch, especially as a beginner. So give yourself grace on that journey and don't stress yourself out trying to finish something in one day when it might take a month. <laughs> This simple framework was the quickest way I was able to level up my skills, starting out with just determination, passion, and creativity, and absolutely no skills. I started out YouTube University, looking online for any and everything that could possibly help me on my journey to building this sofa. Now, if you're building something that doesn't have any existing plans for you to follow, I highly recommend trying to find a video that is the most comparable to what you're trying to create. For me, in my case, I was able to find this sweet man who didn't speak English, but had the best replica of this sofa that I could find. Now, I had to fill in a lot of gaps for myself because I didn't speak the same language as him but it truly helped as a starting point for my journey in creating this sofa. Now, for your project, think outside the box. The video that you may need may not actually be a sofa video. It may be a bench so you can understand how to build the framing of what you're creating. From there, you wanna look up specific videos to learn any skills that you're lacking. If you wanna learn how to do pocket holes, if you wanna learn about tufting, if you wanna learn about upholstery foam, whatever it is that you need to fill in those gaps, learn as much as you can online for free. And finally, I would watch safety videos on the specific tool that you're gonna be working with. I got my shirt caught in my drill once and I was like, never again. I'm gonna to link to a video here that was super helpful for kind of overarching safety. Now, after you've done all of your YouTube university, you've graduated, you're out in the wild, ready to work, right? Almost. Following an expert or a fellow hobbyist that is just a little bit further along in their journey than you can 10x your growth. The first expert I recommend doing in person would be a sewing class. I actually only took one before I did my entire project. Like I mentioned before, my issues with the bobbin, I actually didn't ask about that. So if you do take a class, make sure you at the minimum learn exactly how to thread the needle on your machine, how to reload the bobbin, and how to do a simple stitch that is strong enough for any upholstery project. The second thing I did was I shadowed a contractor that I work with on a lot of my interior design projects, and he was generous enough to show us how to use the pocket hole jig. Whenever you're working alongside an expert, things go smoothly, you feel a lot more confident, you're like, oh, I can do this. And then you get home and it's like you forgot everything they taught you. Sometimes there are nuances that pros just know like the back of their hand that they may not fully explain to you. You get home and you try to do it yourself, you're like, I know this is what they told me, but you might be missing a key piece that is going to help you be successful in that skill. With pocket holes, we miss the fact that they had this little collar on the drill bit where it stopped the drill bit from going all the way through the wood and making a gigantic hole where then the screw is not gonna catch and it's just gonna be super loose and useless. I had to go back to YouTube, find that specific video for pocket holes, and my brain finally clicked, okay, this is what we're missing. And then from there, it was smoother sailing, not perfect, but much smoother. You've prepared, you have practiced, and now it is time to go for it. Don't get stuck in analysis paralysis like I did, trying to perfect, trying to know everything there is to know. At some point, you just have to go for it and take imperfect action towards whatever it is that you are dreaming up. Like I shared with you, I failed the entire project. This is the first piece I made in my sofa. It wasn't great, okay? But I learned from that, I didn't give up. I kept refining that process, getting better with each piece that I made. And that's my encouragement to you to course correct as you're going, but to give yourself space to fail. You're starting something new, you've never done it before. It's not an easy hobby to accomplish, but it is possible. Celebrate the milestones, celebrate the tiny wins, celebrate the losses. Even if you're failing, that means you're learning something in the process and it's only gonna help you get a little bit better and a little bit more resilient to keep going after everything you're dreaming.
You look cute. Don't you look cute, y'all? <laughs> That's my husband. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like I was saying, keep dreaming, y'all.